Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Airships. It's a board game for two to four players for ages 10 and up, with the average playtime being about 45 to 60 minutes. Now this game uh, basically tasks players with building airships and earning victory points, and the player with the most victory points at the end of the game will win. But the way the game is played reminds me a bit of Splendor, and that players start out small, uh, and have to use what they have in order to buy other things on the board that in turn allow, allow them to make uh, bigger purchases. Uh, and in this game it's somewhat similar to that. But instead of collecting gems of a different color like you do in Splendor, you're going to be rolling dice. Players start out with like uh, a couple of these white dice which have certain values on them, one, two, or three. And then eventually, through purchases, they'll be able to unlock and acquire red and black dice, which have higher values. And then again, players are going to be using these dice to acquire various cards in the supply, and the player with the most victory points at the end of the game will win. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the components and see how the game is played. Okay, so uh, before we get started, it's worth noting that this freaking board is huge. I don't know why it needs to be this big. I mean, as you can see, it's like the spaceship from Spaceballs. If you've ever watched Spaceballs, the very beginning, you know, you've got, uh, I don't remember what the name of the ship, but it, it's the, it turns into the Statue of Liberty at the end. Spaceball 1, is it? Or, yeah, I think it's it. Anyway, um, but it's just, it goes on forever, is the joke I'm trying to make here. I don't know why they couldn't have made this shorter this way and longer this way, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to work with what I have. Basically, this board is uh, the general supply and it's broken up into a few sections which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, you've also got these player boards here. Each player receives one of these. They also get a nation of one type like there's the USA here. You've got uh, France here, uh, some other nations in the box. I believe this is Italy here and so on. I could be wrong about some of those. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then you've got some other tokens in here. Each of those nationalities uh, has uh, tokens of that particular country type. Okay, so players will receive, uh, the first player receives three of those tokens. They're called bonus tokens. And uh, the other players receive four. And I think I just threw America back in the box. Yeah, okay. And it starts on this one side, and there's a reason for that. Whenever the change of era hits, this will be flipped over to the two sides. Speaking of change of era, there's a lot of seating that has to go on to set up this board. Basically, there's going to be uh, cards that are dark blue, medium blue, and light blue, and they come in two types. You've got one uh, set with a wrench on the back, and you've got another type with an airship on the back. With the airship cards, these are cards that you purchase up here to get victory points. Uh, and you're going to be seating these in a particular way. But the number of dice you can roll uh, on this, or the number of dice that you can actually use uh, to put toward the point value that need to acquire it is right here. So two white dice. So if you have the ability to roll three white dice, you have to use the values of two of those dice and hope that they add up to five or more, in which case you can acquire the card. The number of victory points that the card is worth is down here in the bottom right. But the way these are set up, like you shuffle the dark blue ones and then you put them face up on these four spaces here. Then you shuffle the moderate or the medium blue ones, put those on top of those, and then put one on top of each space. And then the light blue ones, you put one of each. So you've got three cards in each space is what it comes down to. You've got the dark blue, the moderate blue, and the light blue. Light blue goes on top, dark blue goes on the bottom. And basically that's, that signifies how hard they are to acquire. They start out easy with the light blue deck and then they get harder to acquire when you get to the dark blue. And then any extra cards that you have left over are just put out of the game. You'll have an extra two light blue, extra two moderate blue, or two medium blue, and then two extra dark blue. Those are just simply put away. There should be three cards in each of the four spaces there. Now you've got this other set of cards. Um, again, there's light blue, moderate blue, and then there's this dark blue here. Now the way the light blue works, um, all of the light blue cards will either be put on the board at the beginning or onto uh, a player board. Each player receives a random light blue card and each one has a color on it. You're going to put that color on the appropriate space. The same thing with this board over here. When you deal out the moderate or the, the light blue cards, rather, 
onto the board, you're going to match the color here, and you'll put them on the far left space. And then as you add more cards, they'll, they'll go in the second slot, then the third slot. And if you add a card to one that already has three, they get pushed off to the left here. This one goes away, and the, other, and this, the new one gets put here, and the other two slide over this way. So yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to seed the board with all of the starter cards that are left over that players didn't receive. Again, each player gets one of these. And then you're going to fill up the board uh, with these uh, medium blue, I know it's a little confusing, but you're going to use these uh, medium blue ones here until you have a total of six cards out on the supply. So players can buy cards from here, uh, which have these wrenches on the back. Players can buy cards up here, which have these airships on the back. And uh, then there's this very top tracker. Once players uh, reveal one of these empty spit, like once you buy all of the airships and it reveals this uh, Hindenburg space underneath it, players can actually um, use some of their actions on their turn to try and help build the Hindenburg. And it has the same type of information on it that you would find on one of these airship cards. Like, there's an 11 on the top, which is how expensive, not how expensive, but how much, how much of a value you need to reach in order to uh, build it. And I apologize, it's hard to see because, again, this board is huge. But uh, 11 is what is needed to be rolled in order to um, help build that part of the Hindenburg. And you can use a white die and two red die for that. Now, there's two victory point values on the bottom. There's a, a star that's not filled in, then there's a yellow star that is filled in. The one that is not filled in is lower, it's two points. That's if the Hindenburg does not get completed, that's what the player gets for building it. If the Hindenburg is completed by the end of the game, then they'll receive the full five points. So if the Hindenburg is completed, players receive the higher value. If it is not completed, they receive the lower value. And I'll zoom in on some of this so you can see it later on. Now, seeding this, um, again, I explained that the wrenches, the, the cards with the wrenches on the back, the light blue ones, players receive one of each. Uh, some of it gets placed here. The rest of them, the, these moderate blue backs here, uh, the medium blues, um, are placed or shuffled and placed here. Then you've got this change of air card that's placed in beneath or between this, and then the dark blue ones are placed here. So there's that. And then whenever the uh, change of air hits, this gets flipped over, and then players can use an extra red die. This, this little thing here says one white die, and that's what players start with at the beginning of the game, in addition to the one white die that's on the bottom left hand corner of their starter improvement card. So there's one white die here, one white die here. So players start the die with or start the game with two white dice. But whenever that change of era hits, they'll get an additional red die from this here, plus whatever else they've acquired throughout the game. So basically, again, you start small with only a few dice. You're going to be buying these cards here. These are improvement cards, and these improvements give you various things, uh, including victory points. Some do give you victory points, others don't. But um, you're going to be buying these cards here, getting more dice to use, and then as the game progresses and the cards get harder to purchase, you'll be using these improvements to get more dice to roll, and then you'll be able to acquire those. And basically, at the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points will win. Okay, so as far as what a player does on their turn, the first thing they're going to do is turn over a new expansion card, which is this card here. And they're going to put it into the appropriate space. So uh, this is blue, so it's going to go here on the far right. Again, at any time, if you already have three sitting here, if you've got another one of the same color, these are pushed off the table like that. These slide over, and the new card is placed there. So after that occurs, players can attempt to acquire one of these cards by rolling for it. If the Hindenburg is revealed at, you know, at some point later in the game, players can, uh, instead of buying something here, they can attempt to roll on that. If they are successful with that roll, they simply put one of their ch uh, bonus chips from the supply onto the uh, appropriate space to mark that they, they were the ones that completed that, and they'll get victory points at the end of the game. And I apologize if you can't see it again. I'll try and zoom in a little bit later. Um, but uh, instead of being able to do that at the very beginning, because nothing is revealed here yet, players are going to be trying to either acquire these airships for victory points or acquiring these improvements here. Now, you can only have one improvement per card color on your player board at a time. So I, I have a green one here. If I were to acquire a green one in the future, then um, I'd have to eliminate this uh, completely, get rid of it, and then put the other one in its place. So you can only have one improvement at a time per color. So I'm going to want to go for something else. There's nothing in the green 
green right now. Again, this board is huge, so I have to sort of slide this up and down. But so if I were to go for, say, this uh, two over here, this one will give me an extra white die. So um, all I need to do, really, is um, roll a two or better. Now this this uh, little white die in the upper right hand corner or left hand corner here basically says, okay, I need to use the value of one die to reach two. I can't sum two dice together to get my value or my my, uh, my attempted value here. I can only use the value on one of those dice. I can roll as many as I want, up to three per color. So according to this, I have one white die here and one white die here. So I can roll two dice. I have the ability to roll two white dice. Again, you're limited to three of a particular color, but I can roll two dice. However, I can only choose one of those dice to put toward this goal value here. So if I were to roll this, and one was a one, and one was a three, I would not be able to sum these together and make it four, and then I get this. Luckily, the three, I, I just pick one of these, and the three, luckily, is high enough to, um, you know, get the two. So I've acquired this uh, by, through means of cheating, and I put this on my player board like so. And now in the future, I've got one white die here, one white die here, and one white die here. So now on a future turn, I have the ability to roll a total of three white dice. So on a future turn, you know, when this, this all happens again, again, let's say that other players take their turn, um, you know, stuff is added to the board, people acquire stuff. Okay, this is, I didn't shuffle this very well, did I? No, I didn't. Okay, we'll just do, um, da, 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 da. we'll just say someone else put that there. They took their turn, whatever. Now it's my turn again. I draw, put this card wherever it needs to go. Okay, here's another blue one. And then I look at the board and I say, okay, um, which one am I going to go after now? Uh, how about this orange one? I don't have an orange one yet. This is, actually, I already have three white dice, so I don't know if that would actually help me at all. I might want to go for one of these blue ones down here. Or I could do, say, one of these, uh, I could do this red one up here. I need... Um, a five. I need to roll a five, and I can use two white dice to do it. I can sum up two white dice to do it. And if I'm successful, I can roll a red die in the future. So I'm going to try that. So I'm going to go ahead and roll three dice, and I take the values from two of them. So if I get a three, a one, and a two, and this white die here only goes has a one, two, or three on it. So uh, let's say I roll a three and a two and a one. I can't use, I can't sum these all up to make six because the card demands that I only use two dice. But I can use the three and a two, sum those together, and that totals five, and that's enough. So I can put this now onto my player board. And now in the future, I can use three white dice and one red die. Now, if you don't make your roll, let's say you fail on your roll, you get a bonus, you get, you get to use, uh, or you get to take one of these bonus chips from the supply and add it to your player board. Now, if, if you don't make your roll, what you can also do, if you happen to have this airship, which is passed around a game, I'm not going to go into how that's done because there's a few stipulations there, but if you have this, you can use it to give yourself an extra point to your roll. You can also use a bonus chip here, maximum of one, to give yourself an extra point towards your roll. You can also take another turn if you're willing to sacrifice three of your bonus chips. So you can go again if you want to by giving up three of your chips. Okay, so before we go, I just wanted to give you a quick look at what all of the different colors mean and what cards you might find in that particular deck. I don't want to go through all of this and try and find them. It would take too long. But the uh, purple cards here, they're the financers. And these expansion cards are marked with a purple border. They offer their owner one to three additional dice, and in some cases, victory points. Uh, the hanger are these yellow cards, and they also offer their owner different dice. So you've got one white die here, one black die there. The captains, um, they offer uh, dice as well, but in addition to that, players receive one to three bonus chips uh, one time only whenever that card is acquired. So in addition to being able to get dice for future turns, they get a one-time bonus of, of those bonus chips over here, marked with your flag. The engineers are pretty interesting. Uh, these offer their owner one additional imaginary die with a fixed score. Of course, this die cannot be thrown, so it does not count toward the limit of three dice maximum per color per throw. This die can, however, be used in an exchange via a materials expansion card. 
You've got these green ones down here, the engines. They give their owner a bonus of plus one or plus two on throws in which the dice of a certain color are involved. So like you've got a plus one in black here, a plus one in red here. Um, in addition to that, this one has four victory points tied to it. So that's pretty cool. So you can add, um, and that's, I think it's per die. Uh, there are also engines where the bonus uh, counts for every color of the dice. A white symbol stands for white dice, red for red, and black for black. Okay. Materials. These give their owner the opportunity to exchange his available dice prior to each throw. And this way, a player can obtain dice which his own expansion cards do not allow. This exchange is only ever valid for the current throw. And each turn, the player can decide anew whether to use this exchange. So, you know, you could use uh, some of the white dice that you have on your player board and turn them into other dice of different colors. So as you can see, um, there are different uh, cards here that do various things. And it's, it's going to be, you know, sort of a challenge to try and figure out what you want to go after next, you know, based on what's available to you at the present time. Now this will continue with players taking turns until one of two things happen. There can be at most one card in each of these four fields. So if there's one card here, one card here, zero cards here, one card here. If that ever happens, that'll signal the end of the game. If the Hindenburg gets completed, then that'll also signal the end of the game. In which case, players take a look at their player boards. Let's go ahead and zoom out real quick. There we go. Move that down. Again, I apologize. It's just there's, this board is huge. Um, players will take a look at their player board and count up how many victory points they have by, you know, counting how many points they have in these stars down here. They'll also factor in any points that they've earned by uh, completing parts of the Hindenburg. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win. Okay, so there you have it, a very brief look at the game Airships. It's important to stress that I did not cover all of the rules found in the manual. This was just to give you a general overview so that you could see how the game was played. As far as what I thought, um, if you like Splendor, I think you'll like this game. I did. Um, it's a little different than Splendor. I do prefer Splendor because it's a little bit easier to play. And I just think the uh, components in Splendor are fantastic. They're very colorful. The chips are very, or the gems are like really heavy. So I really like Splendor. I just, I, it's one of my favorite games of all time, at least up to this point. Um, but Airships isn't bad either. Um, I like the theme. Uh, game setup is a little overwhelming for first time players, I think. Like I had to scratch my head. I read the directions like three times. There's an entire page devoted to how this all works out. So like from here down to here, it explains how all of this is supposed to be seated. It's just, you know, these type of cards get seated here, then these go on top of it, and then these get put over here. Then one player receives one of these cards and the rest go over here. And then it's just, it's a nightmare to set up if you're not familiar with any of the components, what their names are and all that jazz. But once you get past that, once you get past the learning curve, then the game is very easy to play. A game or game turns don't take long. It takes longer to set up the game than it does to actually play out a turn. Uh, it's just, you know, you're putting a card down onto the board, you're, you're seeding the supply, and then you're rolling for something, and that's it. And then you're building up your, your company, and, and you're, you know, gaining more dice, then you're using those dice to acquire more stuff, and eventually, you know, you'll have a lot of victory points, and whoever has the most wins. So it's, it's a very simple concept, but setting everything up because you're seeding everything in this game can be a little overwhelming to first-time players. But it's still a pretty good game anyway. If you like Splendor, then I think you'll like this one too. If you guys want to see my written review, you can. www.dadsgamingaddiction.com If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, that way you can keep up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.